This video will talk about first and second generation robots and finally what's next in the biomedical field for robots. Medical robots had their start in 1985 as industrial robots and computed medical robots were used to insert a probe into the brain for a biopsy specimen. A biopsy specimen is when you remove tissue from the body and it is examined under a microscope to look at what disease is present. This procedure was the first robotic surgery that was recorded. Robotic surgery has allowed doctors to perform many different types of complex procedures with a lot more precision, control, and flexibility, which cannot be done with conventional surgical techniques. A robotic surgery system has a camera arm and mechanical arms, which have surgical instruments attached to them. The surgeon sits at the computer console controlling these arms. Some robots could carry out these procedures by themselves without the help of the surgeon, and were cleared by the US Food and Drug Administration, also known as the FDA. One specific robot that we will discuss in detail is the Robodoc, which is the first surgical application used in humans for total hip arthroplasty, or THA. THA is also known as total hip replacement and is a surgical procedure where the damaged cartilage and bone is removed from the hip and replaced with prosthetic parts. The Robodoc received FDA approval in 1998. It has assisted surgeons in more than 24,000 joint replacement procedures across many countries such as the United States, Europe, Japan, Korea, and India. The advantages of using the robotic system during THA surgery are that it causes less pain and blood loss, quicker recovery, fewer complications like infections, and it results in smaller and less apparent scars. Similar to Robodoc, a few years later, the Computer Assisted Surgical Planning and Robotics System also known as CASPER, was developed, through which an industrial robotic arm called Programmable Universal Manipulation Arm, or most commonly referred to as Puma robots, were created for total hip and knee arthroplasty. Knee arthroplasty is a surgical procedure that is used to resurface a damaged knee by arthritis. Although Robodoc is still in operation, CASPER was discontinued in 2004. Now let's take a look at the second generation of robots that use assistive and collaborative approaches. These robots can carry out their own procedures, but are not programmed to do so. Instead, they are programmed to follow the surgeon's motions in a master-slave configuration. Many surgical robotic systems use this configuration where the surgeon uses the joystick controls at the master console to direct the movements of the robotic instruments, and these instruments are known as the slave. These devices are intended to be less invasive during surgery. Essentially, this only allows for a small incision or an instrument to be inserted into the body, which can allow for minimal damage of body tissue. One specific example of a second generation robot is called Da Vinci Surgical Robot, which is a master slave system that has the patient side cart with three or four robotic arms, a visualization system, and exclusive instruments. This robot system translates the surgeon's fingers, wrist, and hand movements into corresponding movements of the instruments that are positioned inside the patient in real time, without any tremors. The surgeon operates sitting down at a console while viewing the surgical field. There are many surgical staff assisting and supervising the laparoscopic arms and tools being used. The advantages of this robot are intuitive control, range of motion, 3D visualization of an open surgery, fine tissue manipulation capabilities, which will allow the surgeon to work through other tasks like making tiny incisions. Another example of a second generation robot is the Sensei Robotic Catheter System, which is a master slave system used for interventional cardiology. Interventional cardiology specifically deals with catheter based treatment for heart diseases. A catheter is a thin tube that is a medical device which can be inserted into the body to perform surgical procedures or treat diseases. This robotic system will allow for accurate positioning, manipulation, and control of catheters during surgery. This robot system received FDA clearance in May 2007. Similar to the Da Vinci, Sensei also translates the physician's hand movements as a controller to control the catheter in the patient's heart. The future of robots aims to have tools that are smaller, lower cost considering how expensive they are currently, and developing disposable robots which are versatile. Currently, we do have guide positioning devices which are attached to the patient and eliminate patient immobilization. Robotic exoskeletons are also being used to assist paralyzed people to walk and to correct for any malformations. Small robots may replace traditional endoscopy, which is a procedure that can allow for one to examine the interior of an organ or the cavity of a body, and thus small robots can help to carry out tasks like biopsies or using catheters. 
Small robots can be used to travel through blood vessels and thus radiation therapy can be delivered or even medicine to a certain site. Also to gather information or patrol the digestive system, robotic capsules can be swallowed. Robotic nurses furthermore can be implemented in hospitals to assist or replace overworked nurses with certain tasks. The idea of surgical robots came about that higher speed and accuracy could be achieved during surgery. For example, this high level of accuracy is really required and necessary during neurosurgery. Surgical robots can also help with receptive tasks to reduce the amount of surgical errors, essentially increasing their surgical capabilities. Importantly, the surgical procedures would be less invasive and have shorter procedure times, which would in turn also reduce surgeon fatigue or any other errors. However, it is important to note that many companies have failed to force the clinical use of equipment that is expensive, such as Casper, due to the high technical maintenance and support that is required. Many hospitals are also hesitant to replace their current existing technology with more advanced and expensive surgical robots. Also, the conflict for healthcare workers and surgeons as having more robots can also result in fewer procedures being carried out and in turn can also be cost heavy for the hospital. It's also important to note that the potential risks using robots can also occur, such as movement latency and mechanical failure. Robots have come a long way and there are many success stories that we have seen from these surgical robots, but we are not limited to these only and the future of robotics has so much more to offer, such as small, inexpensive and disposable robots which can help deliver greater value to the healthcare industry. Before surgical robots mature, there is a lot of work that needs to be done concerning the development of these tools and methods to ensure that there are safer procedures that occur using these robots. We hope that surgery someday can be done without skin incisions as well and hope that robots will be helping us with this.